Musk himself addresses the skepticism around calling this the best chip in the world, saying, how can a company that's never designed a chip design the best chip in the world? What is the answer to that? Yeah, it, we, we knew that Tesla was doing this and, and we knew that they were going to swap out in a video. I think the surprise here is, is uh, you know, the, the timing of, of this happening and uh, just how much, uh, you know, Musk is willing to go, uh, how far he's willing to go to kind of talk about its bona fides. And uh, in, in very Muskian fashion, he's talking about it being the best ever. Um, we'll sort of we'll sort of see and and investors may actually get a chance to sort of put uh, this through the their paces uh, this afternoon uh, because after these presentations that have been going on for quite a while now uh, the investors that are in the room at uh, Tesla headquarters in Palo Alto are going to uh, do some test drives so we may get some reviews as to just how well it performs so those test drives happening later today now the analysts who are there don't have rave reviews i mean so far they've said they're underwhelmed one analyst from roth capital said that it's boring which you know <laughs> anything associated with elon musk you don't normally use the word boring why are they so uh, skeptical about what they learned today well, I, I think it didn't hurt that they started about 40 minutes late, and then the beginning of the presentation was very, very technical. Uh, to, uh, uh, to Tesla's credit, it, it does feel like they've warmed up a little bit. Uh, no sooner did Musk acknowledge that he's sometimes a little bit late in promising things and actually then delivering them. Uh, he, he made a uh, proclamation just in the last few minutes about uh, Tesla network, and uh, this is a, a concept that he talked about a couple of years ago uh, in his uh, master plan part do uh, but he talked about this um, in, in uh, this afternoon's presentation he talked about uh, the idea of this being sort of a hybrid of an uber and Airbnb like model where uh, like uber it's a way to get around and, and like Airbnb uh, whereas you know you put your house or your apartment up on Airbnb and it helps you sort of defray the cost of, of uh, your real estate you basically do the same with your your car and and uh, Musk has talked about uh, doing that with uh, robo taxis so with uh, fully self-driving vehicles able to drive themselves uh, he says he'll uh, he thinks he'll be able to do this by uh, the end of next year which uh, seems again like a very muskian uh, timeline uh, that we'll see if he can actually pull off it's always aggressive with his timelines now Tesla of course already has the autopilot feature so what is he promising that is new I mean a fully fledged self-driving Tesla yeah, I, th I think he's talked about uh, having the hardware necessary for full self-driving before. I think he's now uh, talking about the hardware being even uh, better, sort of new and improved uh, with the, the best you know, computing power out there, uh, but also uh, walking investors through some of the advancements that they've made on the software side as well, and that giving them the capability to actually uh, you know, put features out there, enable people eventually to be able to be sort of out of the loop, and then after that also be able to convince regulators uh, that, uh, you know, drivers can basically stop paying attention. Um, all of this, again, as, as you put it, is, is uh, a, a bold uh, set of statements, and we'll, we'll see if, uh, if, if it's actually something that Tesla's able to pull off. He did quantify that uh, this won't be something that we'll see on streets all over the place. He talked about, you know, in sort of a, a select jurisdiction by sometime uh, late next year. Uh, but again, we'll see. The timing is also interesting, of course, uh, given that Tesla's earnings re results are going to be coming out later this week. Now, I do have to ask you about the story coming out of Shanghai, a video that has surfaced on social media of a Tesla parked in a covered parking garage that starts to smoke from beneath the car and within seconds it bursts into flames i mean we're watching this video now it is it is absolutely shocking we still of course have to verify um, the origin of this video but tesla has said they sent had sent a team to shanghai to investigate what's happening here I, I don't know, and I don't know that Tesla knows at this point. Uh, as you mentioned, they've sent a team to investigate. Uh, we've seen in the past where uh, battery electric vehicles, uh, if they've driven over something and sort of punctured the battery, that it's not a situation where they just sort of immediately uh, burst into flames. Uh, but, you know, lithium, 
uh, you know, uh, burns uh, very intensely, and, and uh, you know, you, you've, you can uh, see uh, for yourself with that video uh, just how much uh, there, there's sort of a fire hazard uh, when, when something goes awry. Uh, but we don't know at, at this point what happened, uh, whether this was a vehicle that was driven over something and the battery was punctured. A few years ago, uh, Tesla had an incident uh, along those lines and sort of beefed up the steel uh, casing around the battery to prevent ag against these sorts of things happening. Uh, we should also acknowledge uh, that uh, gasoline powered vehicles are uh, obviously combustible as well. Uh, but certainly because uh, Tesla is still such a hot commodity and a hot name and electric vehicles are, are so uh, ascendant in China, especially, uh, this is not a good look for, for Tesla. And it's something that they have to quickly uh, get to the bottom of and, you know, sort of put people at ease that this is not something that, you know, happens all the time and, and perhaps was just an anomaly here. Well, we're going to bring you all the latest developments as they try to get to the bottom of it. Um, I also want to ask you about the newly contentious relationship between Musk and Panasonic, which makes the lithium ion batteries that go in Tesla's. This has become now a sort of public feud where Musk is saying that Panasonic isn't producing batteries fast enough, that it's slowing down Model 3 production, whereas Panasonic seems to be intentionally hitting the brakes on production of these batteries, and we don't know for sure why. What is happening here? Yeah, Dana Hull's story on this is really excellent. So uh, she points out in her story that this was always sort of an odd couple, right, where you have uh, Tesla, who's led by this sort of mad genius, uh, sort of uh, uh, move fast uh, Silicon Valley ethos, uh, paired with Panasonic that is this uh, more than century old, very conservative, very deliberate pan uh, uh, Japanese company. Uh, they, they've uh, been in uh, the Gigafactory for a couple of years now out in, in Nevada. Uh, and, you know, it's always been a little bit curious that these two ended up together. Uh, but it's sort of uh, surfaced recently some of the, the tensions that they've had uh, where, you know, obviously Tesla, it's no secret, had serious production issues, uh, you know, even into sort of midway through last year. Uh, and Musk very recently sort of throwing Panasonic under the bus, it felt like, uh, by talking about how Panasonic's uh, battery lines were holding Model 3 production back. Uh, and it, it seemed to be a sort of case of, of you know, making excuses for, uh, you know, Tesla having some, some real uh, sort of operational issues lately. And, you know, Tesla's tried to sort of uh, put to, to rest this notion that they have demand concerns, uh, but obviously Wall Street has, has not uh, really taken Tesla at its word from that regard. Uh, the shares are down about 20% this year.